good afternoon. I'm Anthony Hips, and today I'm going to teach you how to tie the Hips soft body popper. It's a great fly for largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, or in smaller sizes for panfish. Uh, I even tie a large pencil popper for saltwater fish. It has a lot of utility. It's a lot of fun to tie. And today I'm going to introduce a new technique for tying the popper. The first thing I'm going to do is put a hook in the vise, which I've done, and I used a kink shank hook for this. This is a Mustad 33903, size 4, which is what I typically use for smallmouth bass. And the reason for the kink shank is so it'll hold the poppy, popper body in place. I don't want it turning or turning loose on the hook, and this hook does a good job. I'm going to be using basic craft foam, uh, the sticky back kind, and today I'm using some two millimeter or four millimeter thick foam that I'm going to help build the popper body. Uh, the bobbins and tools I'm using, the scissors and the clamps are all made by Dr. Slick company who's one of my sponsors and has been very good to me over the last few years. Uh, they make outstanding scissors and clamps and pretty much any of the fly tying tools you'll need other than the vise and they have a great catalog you can see them online at drslick.com. First thing I'm going to do after I put my hook in the vise is I'm going to put a layer of thread on the hook. This is 6 alt thread and it's white. It's white for a reason because when I paint the popper I do not want the thread color shining through. Some of the paint is translucent. I'm going to use a piece of 4 millimeter thick foam I've cut. This is about a half inch to a quarter inch wide. I'm going to measure it so it will go just back past the hook shank from the hook eye past those, those hook bends. I'm going to cut it and measure it again. Now I'm going to cut it at an angle. To, and I get kind of that shape. I'm going to cut it so I have a little tip. And I'll end up with that right there. And I'm going to take my scissors on the bottom and just kind of crease it a little bit. Now this foam is very pliable, so that's going to help me to put it on the hook shank and keep it there. I'm going to put it just a hook eye length back, press it down, and press down on the bottom of it and hold it for just a few seconds till it, it sets. And now to keep it set, I'm going to wrap it down. Just enough thread wraps to hold it down until I get to the back. Now I'm going to wrap down hard and wrap back forward to the hook eye. Now this is a size 4, so I'm going to build it up a little bit. I'm going to add one extra strip of foam. I'm going to measure it before it flows over flush. And we're going to apply this down with super glue. If I had sticky back measured out, I, would, I could use that. Do not use the sticky back against the hook shank. It will not hold. You need, but it will hold foam on foam. Okay, now I've got some cut a strip of the sticky foam, sticky back foam. I'm going to measure it. I want it to go from the hook eye back past that underbody. The fly is tied in two, two stages. The underbody that gives the support structure, and then the outer body that actually forms the popper. I've measured it. I'm going to fold it in half and cut it at about a 45 degree angle. And I get a shape like that. I'm going to take and round the, that tip off, and that's going to be the front or face of the fly. Now I'm going to take this adhesive off, or the paper covering the adhesive back off. I'm going to slide it just a little bit forward and fold it together under the fly and press. And that's the shape 
Again, I can even use my forceps. These Dr. Slick forceps are great for this to press, crease it on the bottom and just really. Now you can start to see how the popper body is starting to form. And then just take my scissors and cut right along that crease. Now to hold it in place, I just gently make thread wraps. I'm just trying to hold it. I'm not trying to compress the foam until I get to the very back. Now I can tie down hard. And that tip's a little bit longer than I like, so I'll round it off a little bit. Now, I've learned I don't need to do a whip finish knot. I'll put super glue along the bottom crease. I'll put some on the thread wraps there at the base. And I'll coat about an inch of thread with super glue and just wind it in place there. Dave Whitlock's been using this knot for years. He calls it the super glue knot. Pull it up. And now this popper body is ready to paint. Now typically, I'll take it out of the vise and paint it using forceps, but for this illustration, I'm going to paint it while I leave it in the vise. I let the super glue dry, and then I can start painting it. I'm using 3D fabric paint. Uh, you can use slick, you can use tulip scribbles. Uh, you can get this in any of the uh, art shops like Hobby Lobby or Michaels. Uh, it's, it's very cheap. One canister or bottle will do hundreds of flies. I'm going to make a fire tiger pattern. I'm going to start with the fluorescent yellow paint. Now first I'm going to fill in this seam along the bottom with a, and I'm just squeezing just barely just enough paint to get it going. You can put the tip right against it and just kind of let gravity move it out. I'm not trying to put a thick glob on there. I'm just And I can use multiple colors. I'm going to add a little fluorescent green for the top part of the fly. Again, I'm just... Now, if you want to use paintbrush paint, you can use acrylic paint, water-based, and put it on with a brush, but you'll need to do more than one coat, or otherwise you'll be able to see the thread wraps through it. But I have done that on occasion. It's easier to do, but it takes at least two coats, sometimes three, to get the colors to really coat the fly very well. There, I'm getting the paint. I get it right up against there. I kind of mash them together a little bit. Now, I like to have a, a red or orange face of my fly. I'm going to take it out and turn it up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to paint the face this red. Again, don't try to gob it on there. Now, some of you guys might be tempted to take build the popper body and then use spray paint out of a can any solvent based paint is not going to work you will watch that popper body shrivel up and, and go away because it dissolves the solvent in there dissolves that foam so only use water based paints on your popper nice thing about these paints is if your child or dog or cat gets into them and happens to ingest it, it's totally harmless. Non-poisonous, it will not hurt your kids or your pets. And there's the fully painted popper. Now I need to let it dry for about an hour or two on a low humidity day. A good way to dry it is to uh, stick it in a piece of foam or cork and put it in your bay window in the sun and just let it sit there. Sometimes I'll let them sit overnight and dry before I do anything else with them. Now what I've 
done with the popper. After the paint has dried, I've painted, uh, did paint on the eyes. I just dip a nail head in and uh, stick it to the paint and it leaves a nice round spot. Uh, this one I did red and then I come back with a smaller nail head and dip it in black and that makes the painting on eyes. Then I'll use magic marker, permanent marker, to draw in the uh, lines on the fly. People ask, how do I get the squiggly lines on the fly? What's my secret? And I always tell them the same thing, large doses of caffeine. That will help you get the, the wiggle uh, in your marking. But really the trick to it is just connect the dots. For time's sake, we're using a popper that's already been painted and already finished. After it's finished, the paint has dried and I've applied the magic marker. Then I'll dip it in water-based polyurethane. You can use clear fingernail polish, that works great, but it might dissolve the markings on there. Uh, but, but it works great to make a coating on the fly. You don't have to make the coating on the fly, but it certainly helps it look better and it adds some durability. It gives it that lure-like shine. So this fly has been dipped in polyurethane uh, twice, about 10 minutes apart. It's been put on this rotator after it was dipped uh, to allow that polyurethane to dry and you need to rotate it so it all dries uh, evenly and doesn't glob up on the fly. So the fly has been dried. It's ready to finish. Now we're going to finish uh, tying the tail and putting the legs on the fly. I'm going to put the thread back on right behind the popper head. And I like to put just a little bit of flash in some of my poppers, especially this fire tiger color. And I'll cut some crystal flash. Now the way I'm going to put this on the body is, or tie it in, is not try to tie it in by the tip. I'm actually going to wrap the crystal flash evenly around the thread. I'm going to use the thread to position it on top of the hook shank and then wind back. That way that will not pull out. Now I'll put just a little bit of, this is chartreuse craft hair. This is the chartreuse craft hair with a sheen. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to I've cut it loose. I'm going to put it around the thread and I'm going to wrap back and tie it down. And I need a little bit more. I'll tie it in the same way. Down. Now before I cut this the length I want, I'm going to take a black magic marker and I'm going to pull everything back tight. I'm going to make markings on this. Pull everything back tight and hold it and just go on each side like that. Look at how those markings line up. You can do that if you hold it tight. If I cut it, I can't get enough space to tie it and, and to make the, the marker spots. And I'm gonna want the tail to be about as long as the body, maybe as long as the hook shank. I'll pull it back and cut it and fluff it up if I want. Now I want to put the rubber legs on this fly and I'm going to use chartreuse rubber. You can use silicon. I like the round rubber. These are medium sized rubber legs. Again, I'm going to take the leg, the rubber strand and fold it around the thread and, and bring it and let the thread carry it to the top. Now I'm going to make semi tight wraps back and I'm going to pull each leg, one strand to each side, and hold it. And now I can tie it down hard. You want them split, but you want them kind of positioned still sort of on top of the hook shank. And those are about the right length. So now I want to hackle the fly. I'm going to use a dark hackle for size four. The size hackle is not critical. The 
color just can be dark, it can be green, you can pretty much use any color you want. It's up to you. You can get as creative or as plain as you want to with this. It's a wonderful thing about tying especially warm water flies is you can mix and match and do what you want. I want to get my thread keeper here. Now here I've tied the, the hackle in right behind the popper head. That's the, re the reason is, is the way I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to apply just a bit of super glue there. And a rotary vise really helps with this. I'm going to grip the hackle with my rotary vise and I'm not going to wind this. I'm going to use the vise. I fluffed up the feather. I'm going to wind back toward the tail of the fly, not catching my rubber strands. Be careful. And now I'm going to wind back forward, wiggling it a little bit so I don't catch all the fibers and tie them down. Now, use your bobbin, just flip it over two or three times. And use these great scissors from Dr. Slick to clip the hackle right against the hook shank. Make three or four thread wraps. And again, I'm going to use the super glue knot. Put a little super glue on about an inch to half inch of thread. Pull the hackles back with my fingers. Hold it straight up. Let it dry for a second and then clip the thread right against the hook shank. You can just slide it against your point of your scissors and clip it. I am now finished with tying the tail of the hook or the tail of the popper. Flip it over. Those legs are going to kick wonderfully. Now I want to put rubber legs through the body of the fly. I've got a regular uh, sewing needle and I've got here I've made a loop of thread through it. And tied it with a double surgeon's loop. I'm going to turn the fly so I can see and I'm going to put the, this needle in at an angle. I want the legs to make an X through the middle of the body. Now do not try to shove this through with your thumb or finger because that back of that needle is sharp too, through too and it can go into your thumb so don't do that. Uh, I'm using the end of my sharpie to push it through some hard surface. I push the needle through. And I'm going to take two of these rubber strands. Hackles, pull them off. I'm going to tie an overhand knot right in the middle. And I'm not going to pull it down real tight yet. I'm just wanting a knot there. That'll serve a purpose you'll see in just a minute. Okay, I've got two legs with overhand knots. I'm going to put, put it in the thread loop I've made in, this, in the th thread that's through the needle. I'm going to pull it through gently. Don't try to pull it too fast or the heat may break your thread or your hackle. And see that knot I made, that overhand knot? Now I'm going to pull it tight and just slide that knot up into the body and let it go. Now you see the purpose of it. It actually holds the rubber hackle in the body very well. If you just put it in there straight, uh, it's real easy for the fish or you with your forceps to pull out. This is a, makes it a little more durable. Now, rubber legs will not last forever. Uh, they oxidize over time in sunlight. So you'll have to replace them after a while, but that's an easy way to do it. So I've, now I'm going to make the, or add the other rubber strand. I've pushed it through. It's going to make an X through the body, rubber strand. Put it through, pinch it, hold it, pull the strand through the body. Now, that knot, pull tight, and let it go. That. This is a wonderful and effective fly. Now I'm going to measure the legs and just trim them off two at a time. 
to get the length I want. If you're fishing and the legs are wrapping around the hook shank, they're, they're a little too long. You can cut them back just a little bit, but cut just a little bit at a time. I always carry scissors with me when I'm fly fishing. Uh, and sometimes the rubber legs are, are so long that they wrap on the cast and that'll kill the effectiveness of the fly. So I just trim them slightly. But that's the finished hip soft body popper in the chartreuse fire tiger color. And the reason I tie the legs like that, they have tremendous kicking ability on the water. Just a little, very slight movement with your rod tip or stripping the line and those legs will move and dance. This is a good fly to fish dead drift. Uh, my biggest smallmouth over the past 20 years have come on this fly. So, hope you enjoyed tying with me today and look forward to talking to you again. God bless you.